So, have you ever wondered how you can add some dynamism to your games thanks to some game juiciness tricks? You know, things like a 2D screen shake to really bring home the impact of your ship with asteroids. Well, today we're going to see that in our modern game engines, that's actually quite easy to do. Hello everyone, I'm Mina, and in this quick Godot 4 c -sharp tutorial, we're going to see how to set up a very basic screen shake for a 2D game. Note that today we'll be extending the demo that we worked on in the last episode of the series on how to instantiate 2D obstacles randomly in the scene and detect collisions with our player avatar. So if you want to get the code and assets from this previous episode, don't hesitate to check out the GitHub repo with all my Godot tutorials. Oh, and just before we dive in, don't forget that if you want to support the channel and get some exclusive rewards like mini-games, tools, plugins and assets, you can check out my brand new Patreon. Plus, if you go for the highest Square member status, you'll even get to vote for future tutorial topics at least once a month. So, feel free to have a look. Alright, to begin with, let's make sure our scene is set up properly. In the last episode, we saw how to use some Path2D and Path2D nodes to have our asteroid spawning line at the top of the screen, and then how to use a timer to regularly create new instances. And for now, we just had this basic hierarchy, and everything worked out of the box. And that's actually a pretty cool thing with Godot's 2D engine. You don't need to add any camera or light node in a 2D scene for it to be rendered and visible in-game, which is quite different from a Godot 3D scene that won't show anything unless you have at least a camera 3D node and a light 3D node. However, here, since we want to be able to do a screen shake, we're going to have to add a camera 2D node to our hierarchy. This way we'll be able to move this camera node at runtime to do our screen shake and have the whole render move a bit. Also, you'll notice that we need to use the fixed top left anchor mode for this camera and not the default drag center option, cause that wouldn't render our current 2D scene properly given how we've set up our other elements. But other than that, we don't need to change anything else in our scene cause all the rest of the screen shake will be done in our player scene, in the player script that is on its root node. For now, we'll just add a new method in the C-sharp class called screen shake and call it from within our on area to the body entered function, which as a quick reminder, as we saw last time, is a callback to the player's area to the node body entered signal that is triggered whenever another physics body enters this special zone, meaning here whenever we collide with an asteroid. And now, of course, the next step is to actually implement this screen shake logic. Okay, now that we have our camera node, we're going to use some c -sharp code to have it shake around whenever our player avatar hits an asteroid. As you can see, the idea will be to have some kind of random vibration that starts at the time of collision and then quickly fades out. To do this, let's first add a bunch of variables to our player c -sharp class. We'll start with a reference to our camera 2D node, and something called a fast noise light, that will both initialize in the ready function of our script. Now, the fast noise light is a lightweight noise generation library that is built in into Godot and can be easily instantiated and configured to then generate random numbers at will. It can give you 1D, 2D, or 3D results, so it's quite versatile, and by default it creates a simplex noise, which is a specific type of mathematical noise that is continuous, meaning that if you pass it similar inputs, it will generate similar noise values. Those Godot noises can be used for a variety of things, from procedural terrains to texture synthesis, animation effects, semi-random level layouts, or audio generation, for example. In our case, this fast noise light instance, which we create in the ready function and leave with its default parameters, will simply give us some random displacement values for our camera so that we can offset it from its base position and get our screen shake. That's why after those two variables, we have a few more to keep track of what the initial position of our 2D camera was when the screen shake started, how long the shakes should last, and how strong they should be. And remember that in Godot, all 2D lines are given in pixels, so we need to pick quite a big number here. And finally, this variable is for how long the screen shake we're currently computing has left, if there is one. All of those variables are set up and used in the functions at the bottom of our script. 
So first of all, we have the screen check method we prepared before, and here we'll simply take the current position of our 2D camera, store it as the initial one so that we can compute our camera offset based on this reference, and then put our current shake delay to the total shake time. Then we'll use the process Godot built-in hook to run our screen shake logic continuously for as long as this shake delay is over zero. So basically, while we haven't reached this zero threshold, we'll offset our camera position by a random amount, computed thanks to the getNoise function, and we'll decrease the remaining shake time by the current frame time delta. This getNoise method does two things. First, it sets an arbitrary seed for the noise generator, and second, it calls its getNoise1D method to generate a new random value. The idea here is that by setting a different arbitrary random seed for the x and y directions in our camera offset, we'll get different values in both directions instead of having two similar numbers. Then the extra gd.rendf call in here, which is again a Godot built-in, is another way of adding some variety, and we use our screen shake delay as the main input for our noise generator. So basically, this line will be changing ever so slightly as our screen shake delay decreases thanks to the process function, and so we'll get random offsets for our 2D camera that fade out over time. And that's about it, actually. If we replay our game now, you see that whenever our ship hits an asteroid, the whole screen indeed shakes for a little while, before calming down to its initial fixed state. So, here you go. You now know how to implement a simple 2D screen check mechanic in Godot using just a camera 2D node and some procedural noise generation. I really hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you did, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel to not miss the next ones. And of course, don't hesitate to drop a comment with ideas of Godot tricks that you'd like to learn. And also a huge thanks to my very first Patreons for the support. And in particular, Achilles, who's my very first Square Patreon. As always, thanks a lot for watching, and take care.